cash flow versus equity. This is one of the things that I feel like is super contentious for it's an argument real estate investors. as old as the ages. <laughs> Pretty much <laughs> in, in the real estate investing space. And I think that the biggest divide in this comes between people that I would say have some semblance of financial freedom and those that don't because how much you value each of these different metrics in real estate really sort of varies depending on your current, you know, income position and your current goals. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, because typically people that are getting started trying to escape their nine to five, like their only income's coming from their W-2, cash flow is like the sexiest thing you can think of, right? Once you get that Add that equity built up and you're able to refinance and use that that gain that you have on paper by doing like you know doing a cash out or something like that that's where real wealth and value comes from and all of a sudden yep. if you can pull out a hundred thousand two hundred thousand half a million dollars from properties that you've accumulated over the years in exchange for a few thousand dollars worth of cash flow that becomes right. a no-brainer well and i think the big thing that gets missed in the in the argument is to like that's tax free income. Like, so mm -hmm. when I'm looking at my income this year, I did a decent size cash out refinance on some of my properties. That's tax free income, right? I'm adding that to my income stream this year. I know a lot of people are like, well, why would you do that? You're taking on debt. It's like, yeah, but I just got all that money this year. And in five years, I might do it again, mm -hmm. you know, which is a shift, a mind, mindset shift from when I started was, well, if I pay down, if I buy a property every year for 10 years, I pay them down, you know, that argument and then the snowball. Uh, and then you you know just have your taxes and insurance and maintenance and all that sort of stuff, but your the majority of that cash flow is now going to you. That is like where I started, but then you realize like how inefficient that can be, mm -hmm. you know. And if you're just looking to replace income, then yeah, you're always hunting for cash flow, but you probably haven't been able to find a lot of it lately. A lot of people talk about these you know properties in the Midwest, which I assume you can still buy. I don't know the way everything's going. I don't know if you can. They're like, oh, it's like forty thousand dollars for this property, and you know it rents for twelve hundred dollars a month. Their cash flow is just insane. You can go buy a bunch of those, and you're making so much cash every single month. It's like, yeah, you're true, but when that property grows ten percent or twenty percent, that's like four thousand or eight thousand dollars. When my five hundred thousand dollar property over here, you know that cash flow is three hundred dollars a month grows 20 percent that's 200 grand if you have a w-2 i'd almost go a little more aggressive especially if you're like mm -hmm. it's a really good secure w-2 and you're happy with that income like who gives a shit about the cash flow mm -hmm. right as long as you're buying good quality properties that have appreciation mm -hmm. like that's awesome because yeah you pick up 10 properties in 10 years and they all you know break even or have some security buffer right mm -hmm. after set asides and all that man in 10 years that wealth you built is way more significant than worrying about, well, I need cash flow because I'm trying to replace my W-2 income. So yep. when you're looking to do this as an investment, you have to be thinking, you know, seven, 10, 30 year horizon on these. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> like, trust me, if you're buying a cheap property that's not gonna have that long-term value, you know, it needs a lot of work, it's in a terrible area, just so you can make, you know, an, like $1,000 a month instead of 300 on that A-class property, or, you know, even 100 off that A-class property, I guarantee you your net gains will be terrible in comparison on that cheap property versus that good property. Like yes. sure, the immediate check's coming in, so you make $12,000 a year off of it, but the A-class property, you know, grows I don't know, let's say $200,000 over the next 20 years. Yeah, I mean, you might have to buy some lower class properties when you're starting out because that's like in your zone of confidence. But like getting into those nicer areas and like you and I have always kind of gone along the lines of like, hey, like, if it's a nice property today and people want it today, they're going to want it when the market shifts and it goes down. You know, they're going to continue to want it. We're still going to be in demand. And those properties typically weather storms and come out at the other side way better as opposed to a dilapidated neighborhood where you might have like a nice house that you renovated, but the neighborhood itself doesn't have the income socially from the community or from the county, the city or whoever is running that. And it's, they're letting it dilapidate, including the infrastructure. So that neighborhood's not going to continue to be maintained like an A-class where it's going to grow and come out of recession even stronger. So and it and it's matter. kind of probably a, a little bit of a mind shift from when we started out, which we were pretty cash flow, oh, yeah. like we were cash is king type mentality. But now that we have a large enough portfolio that if we do have properties that underperform, like one that has an oil leak and doesn't generate any revenue uh, for months, 
like we're okay with that because we're looking at that portfolio as an asset and what it's going to look like in five, seven, 10 years, as opposed to how much income can that bring. And that's because we've looked at other ways to create income that are actually quite, you know, quite a bit more income potential than you can from cash flow from properties, unless you're going, you know, thousands of doors. For sure. And that, and that's the benefit of scale, you know, when you reach that point and, and where it does get hairy is when you're starting out and you don't have that yet. I mean, going back to the, you know, when I was yep. a solo show and I was flipping properties <clears throat> myself, I mean, I got in big trouble on one of my properties because there were issues with it and I did not have the, I mean, I had cash reserves, so I was able to survive, but I did not have the income to cover the costs. Well, and again, it goes back to that long-term appreciation play that we look at too. And that's why we're like that as opposed to, man, we need this cash flow to grow our business. We have other revenue generating activities with our wholesaling business and mm -hmm. flipping that we actually can get some pretty significant income from. And, you know, if, like, I think that even if you get to like three or four properties that are all cash flowing at 200 bucks a door, like you're pretty secure. Like you can absorb oh, yeah. quite a bit. If you're trying to live off that cash flow, you're probably <laughs> living in a van doing the whole thing. But like, Hey, you, you're, you should be able to survive that. Like if, if one tenant doesn't pay for a year, like you should be okay. All right. Any, any last bits on that, Dan? No, that's good. I think I, I will just share my quick little tidbit is I used to always be cash flow heavy. Like I need cash flow, I need cash flow. Um, but now I'm more like long term mindset of, yeah, that cash flow is great and I'm going to take it anytime I can. Um, and I'm not going to put myself in a risky position by having negative cash flow. Uh, but like that appreciation is just so much more powerful in the long term than cash flow. So you got to look at both. Thanks for listening. Please leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And check us out at CollectingKeysPodcast.com for tips and guides on starting your own real estate investment and wholesaling business.